with you. So hi, everybody. Uh, it's such a pleasure to have you all here today. My name is Eric Owens. I'm director of the International Studies Program here at BC. And on behalf of our program, as well as the Volunteer and Service Learning Center and Theology Department and other folks who have passed around the Islamic Studies uh, Program as well, who passed around this information, thank you all for, for joining us. I am really happy uh, to have um, with us today uh, Brian Bowman of the Friends Committee on National Legislation, who's going to give a quick update about some of the internship and fellowship programs that they offer in Washington, D.C., uh, a view of what that entails for um, undergrads and postgrads as well. And then uh, we'll open for questions and we'll wrap up before, uh, before 1230. Uh, so thanks very much for be here, uh, being here and Brian, the floor is yours. Awesome, well, thank you so much, Eric. And thank you so much to all of you for taking the time to join uh, me today. Um, I'm Brian Bowman. I'm a 2018 graduate of UMass Amherst from Massachusetts. And uh, my brother actually graduated from BC last year. Um, and currently I'm a fellow at FCNL working on Middle East policy. Uh, based in Washington, D.C. And as Eric mentioned, I just wanted to take a, a while to talk to you guys about some of the opportunities that we have for undergraduate students and recent graduates. Um, a bit about FCNL, we are a nonpartisan, nonprofit, public interest lobbying organization. Um, we are a Quaker organization, but certainly you don't have to be a Quaker um, to work here. I'm not a Quaker. And I don't think any of our policy staff are Quakers, as far as I know, either. Um, some of the issues that we work on um, and lobby Congress and work closely with uh, congressional offices on, um, it's really a wide range of domestic and foreign policy issues, combating climate change, economic justice, criminal justice reform, advocating on behalf of immigrants and refugees, uh, healthcare issues, nuclear non-proliferation, ending endless wars, reducing Pentagon spending. Um, we have a very, very broad portfolio. Um, a, a little bit about lobbying itself. Can I just get a quick show of hands? Has anybody here done any kind of lobbying or just met with any kind of elected official before? Awesome, I'm seeing some hands, uh, seeing some no's as well. Um, that's totally fine too. I, I didn't have any uh, particular lobbying experience before joining FCNL and that's certainly um, not a requirement, but it's good that some of you guys uh, are, are a bit familiar with it. Um, I think I'll mention that it might be helpful. Like for me, before joining FCNL, like I kind of had a negative connotation with the word lobbying and maybe some of you guys feel that way too. And I think if so, like that's understandable, if not, <laughs> Rightfully, um, if you think of a lobbyist, you might think of like a shady person who like manipulates the government on behalf of like a fossil fuel company or a huge bank or something like that. But I think like the foundational distinction between that kind of lobbying and the work that we do at FCNL is that we are um, a nonprofit not, uh, uh, institution. So we don't accept any money from corporations or any kind of special interest groups. Um, we are 501c3. We don't have any profit motive. All of our funding comes from other nonprofit uh, grants and then from individual donations. So all the work that we do um, is informed by our values and is in behalf, on behalf of what we feel is the public interest. Um, to give you a more concrete idea of the kind of work that we do, um, one of the main issues that I work on personally is uh, ending US participation in the war in Yemen. Um, if, any, if anybody, I, I imagine some of you might not know a lot about that. Um, Yemen is actually the worst humanitarian crisis in the world, uh, according to the United Nations. But last year, Congress, um, including the Republican Senate, passed a historic war powers resolution to end US participation in that war. Um, it was ultimately vetoed, but it was the first time that Congress had ever invoked the 1973 War Powers Act. Um, and it was a major development for the kind of balance of power between the executive and legislative branches. Um, and at that time, I was uh, actually working as a journalist here in DC. I studied journalism and international relations at UMass. And I had the opportunity to interview Rokana, uh, Representative Rokana, 
from California, who was the co-sponsor of that bill, along with Bernie Sanders in the Senate. And he told me that they never would have been able to pass that resolution through Congress, if not for the work of FCNL and our partner organizations. So working with FCNL, I think, is a great way to do genuinely impactful work on issues that you care about and to get really good hands-on policy experience in D.C. Um, it's part of my job. I mean, I meet with congressional offices almost on a, a daily basis. Like later today, we're meeting with uh, Representative Garcia's office uh, about a letter that they're putting together. And some of these offices really do lean quite heavily on us to provide policy expertise and to help them coordinate congressional efforts. Um, and so now I, I just want to transition and talk about the opportunities that we have um, themselves, because I think that's the most important part that you're all here to, to learn about. Um, I am going to share my screen. Eric, can I, can I do that? Or I, I don't actually have to do that. I can drop a link into the chat if that's easier. I'll just, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll put this link in here um, if you guys want to click it and follow along. If not, I'll just, I'll just go over it. Um, this link, it has sort of a summary of all of our so, uh, different Sorry, Brian, I j was trying to get someone else on the call here. Um, uh, I just made you a co-host so you can share the screen now. Okay, cool. I'll, I'll do that too then. Um, one moment. Um, can all of you see this sort of brochure here? Cool. Um, so just at the top, uh, it says this is what a lobbyist looks like. Again, that's that's kind of like a sort of saying that we have just to sort of show that like a lobbyist isn't necessarily some shady dude in like a really expensive suit in DC, like young people like yourselves from wide ranges of backgrounds, like can be lobbyists and like we kind of want to take some ownership over over that term. Um, I'm going to start with the Young Fellows Program here. Um, that is the program that I'm currently a part of. Um, it's an 11-month 11, 11 program that includes benefits, a uh, full-time salary at the D.C., at least at the D.C. Uh, living wage standard, health care, vacation, sick leave, um, the whole likes. And through the Young Fellows Program, you work directly uh, alongside one of our uh, like policy leads like on our lobbying team on a particular issue. So you'll be assigned to a particular issue. Um, I work alongside somebody named Hassan El Taib and our program is, uh, our agenda is Middle East policy. So uh, right now, at least for this year, that covers Yemen, Iran, and Israel, Palestine. Um, I think working alongside uh, our lobbyists, I, I think all of our lead lobbyists are really impressive people. Um, a lot of them have really long careers here in Washington are really well respected on the Hill and um, you, are, you can just learn uh, an, an enormous uh, amount from them. The Young Fellows Program is open to recent graduates. Um, recent graduates is a very loose term. Um, this year there are seven of us. I think it's like three of three people are directly uh, just out of college and then four of us have been out of school for two to three years now, uh, about in that window. Um, so I, I can't say enough about how much I'm enjoying this fellowship so far and highly encourage you all to consider that if you are graduating this year or just to keep it in mind um, whenever you do graduate. Um, but for those of you who are, you know, maybe underclassmen or um, at least are juniors, uh, we do have summer internships too. Um, those are also paid, which I will say it, I think is is really cool. Um, it's particularly in DC. I mean, it's not necessarily that easy to find paid uh, summer internships. So I think that that's a, a great advantage of our program. And um, as, as part of this program too, you get really good hands-on experience as well. Um, you also get to work, uh, you know, closely with the lobbying team. Um, depending on what your strengths are and what you want to get out of the program. You can do a lot of different things with it. If you're interested in communications, you can go that route. But if you're interested in a more policy route, you can certainly work uh, on that team. And you will get uh, the opportunity to sit in at least with congressional uh, staff, but also likely to uh, participate in, in those uh, lobby visits. 
Um, to go back up to the top real quick, we also have an advocacy core program. Um, and this is a pretty cool program too. It's less of a commitment, certainly than the, the Young Fellows program, but even the summer internship program. This uh, program is not based in DC. This uh, allows you to do work locally uh, with young adults in your community leading on uh, local grassroots campaigns. Um, it's, it's really just a, a 10 day sort of immersive experience. Um, it, I guess it, th this year it's gonna be August, no, I'm, I'm sorry, yeah, August to May. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm a little bit confused about that part. I, I think uh, if you check out our website, they'll have more information about that. But the main point, uh, part of the advocacy core thing that I wanna highlight is that because we're a nonprofit organization, our power does not come through fundraising or through big money. Our power, the, the way that we can influence policy the foundation of that is our grassroots uh, advocacy core to have young people engage and participating with us around the country. I think maybe some of you might be surprised how far uh, that can go in swaying congressional offices. Um, when you have a lot of young people together coordinating and organized on an issue, it is a, a really powerful thing. And finally, the last thing I just wanna to mention too, um, I think this is also a really cool opportunity, sort of like the advocacy core thing. It's less of a, uh, a, a, a commitment. Um, it's our spring lobby weekends. It's gonna be coming up in March this week and we organize uh, young people, a lot of, mostly college students, but also just young people in general from all over the country uh, to come together in teams. We give you a, a training and uh, we give you the opportunity. We set up meetings with you uh, with senators and, and with Congress people to lobby them on a particular issue. This year, uh, that issue is going to be uh, addressing police violence and uh, racial disparity in the criminal justice system. Um, I think this is, a, if, if that's an issue that, that you feel particularly really passionate about, this is a fantastic opportunity to do some meaningful work on that. But also just broadly, if you are just interested in uh, public interest lobbying and want to get a kind of taste of it and get your feet wet to see if you like it. Um, this is a really good uh, opportunity to do that as well. Um, so I'm going to stop uh, sharing now and open this up to questions. No, I'm sorry. Thanks very much, Brian. Um, what questions do you guys have? Uh, yeah, Anna. I was just a little confused. You mentioned um, when you were talking about the summer internship, it's specifically for juniors. Do you mean rising juniors or rising seniors? Uh, I'm sorry. I meant to just say like juniors as an example. It's for any, uh, any pe people who are still undergraduate students. Thanks so much. Yep. I think yeah, potentially you could also participate in that if you're uh, if you're just graduating in th this spring as well and looking for a summer internship, I think you can also participate. Great, yeah, Miran. Are there any restrictions based on foreign nationality? No. Excellent. Uh, Opal. Hi, sorry, my camera isn't working. Um, but I, I got this email relatively late, so I, I just found out about it today and I decided to click on So excuse me if I'm not um, well informed about uh, the work that you guys do. But as somebody who is, um, I guess, to put it in, 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 um, in mollified terms, is a bit more conservative. Is there a, is there a space for me here? Because it seems, um, and, and this is not too obviously, it, 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 attack anybody, but it, it seems like this organization is a bit more on the liberal side. I don't know if my question is making sense. Sure. Yeah. So we are absolutely a nonpartisan organization. Okay. Um, and we, we take that like really seriously. Um, I think if you look at our issues, I mean, we don't really characterize like our selves as any as liberal or as pro like progressive. But I think if you just look at the issues that we work on, you might make that characterization and that, that might be fair. Um, I will just say though that um, we, 
we definitely do do a lot of work with Republican offices as well, like on the Yemen war powers resolution thing, like our entire focus really on that. We, in that particular instance, we knew that we would likely have the support of the Democratic senators, but we like worked super hard to get the support of Republican senators and ultimately won the support of about like six Republican senators. I think particularly on foreign policy, these issues really don't necessarily always fall on like a left right spectrum. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, absolutely. I mean, we, we have good relations with uh, Republican offices. Um, we, we talk to them just as much as, as Democratic offices. And so, yeah, I, 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 we're, we're open to, to everybody for sure. Okay, thank you. Great, thanks. Um, uh, Jess. Jess Grotovich. I think my um, microphone is working. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Um, I was just wondering how the fellowships work with the coronavirus pandemic, like what it looks like now. That's a great question. And I, I, I should have mentioned that probably at the top. So generally, like traditionally, the fellowship is, is based entirely in Washington, D.C. Like you would have been required to move uh, and live here for the duration of it. And you know, they certainly will provide you resources to, to do that. Um, however, this year, so I, I was already based in, in DC and two of the other fellows decided to move to DC as well in hopes that, you know, maybe like towards the end of the fellowship, things uh, might open up and they might be able to do things in person. Our office in DC is mostly closed right now. Um, we're doing our work almost entirely remotely. Um, so, I, I really can't say necessarily what the situation will be like uh, for the next rounds of fellowships. Um, we're, we're taking it all very seriously, and, but we're also trying to be a, adaptive as best as possible and work with people to, you know, what, whatever works best for them, whatever they feel comfortable with. Thank you. Great, great thanks. We have Sophia Marino, and then we'll go back to Anna. Hi, thank you for coming to talk to us. This is more of a logistical question, I guess. When you said living wage stand standard, is that just minimum wage? No, it's not minimum wage. Um, I don't actually know a whole lot about that in, in particular. There's some kind of like in DC, I, I don't know who does it, but there's some kind of like living wage index, like what a real living wage is. Um, you know, I'll say it's, to be honest, it's not like a lot of money, like th this kind of work, like especially, uh, at the base level, um, you know, it's, I'm, I'm not in it for, for the money, certainly, but it's a, a decent salary that will allow you to uh, pay your rent and live relatively comfortably in, in Washington, D.C., um, so I'll, I'll say that much. Thank you. I was just wondering. Yeah. Yeah, important question. Um, who else? Anna, Anna, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um... I was just wondering um, on your website, when you look at like the internship application, not the fellowship, but the internship, if you click to apply, it says like this position is closed. Are you not open for this summer? Is it only next summer? Um, so, so yeah, so um, I'm not exactly sure. I, I know that we do have um, deadlines set up. So it, it is for this upcoming summer, summer 2021. Um, I guess the application is not necessarily open yet, but it should be soon if you want to keep checking back. Um, I know that that's kind of tough uh, right now. Um, I, the, I'll say too, like the reason why I am speaking to all of you guys today, like in, in October is that uh, generally like fellows will travel back like physically to uh, their universities or alma maters and then just like the region to try to, you know, talk to students and get, and get them involved. Um, so for whatever reason that had always taken place in October. So we're trying to keep that alive, like virtually. Um, so yeah, that, that is a, a, a great question. That's important to note. I, I don't believe either of the, um, applications are open right now, but they will be shortly in the, in the deadlines are secure. If you guys want to put those on your calendar. Um, I, I will say right now too, though, this is a good opportunity. I'm going to paste into the chat here. This is our sign up, which is open for spring lobby weekend. So, or spring lobby week. So if you want to, if, if that part of our uh, program is of interest to any of you, this link here that I just posted, you can sign up for updates there and you can just get like all the information about the spring lobby week there. 
Great. Sophia, did you have another question or just not remove the hand from the first one? No. Sorry about that. <laughs> no problem at all. Um, anybody else have uh, questions for Brian? Eric, that's just a quick, uh, hi, Brian, Dan Ponsetto. Quick question, and I, I apologize if, if you already mentioned this. This has to do with the COVID pandemic uh, and, and the effect. On the spring, um, you know, uh, gathering, is there a chance, is that already being seen as something that's going to go virtual, or are you hoping to get people um, together? That's another great question. Um, technically, FCNL has not made a final decision on that, um, but to be honest, like, I think it's, increasingly very likely that that will be uh, done virtually as well. I think, I think a lot of schools will, will skip their spring breaks or, or ask students not to leave state, you know, so. Yeah, and so, uh, yeah, exactly. And so, um, yeah, I think it's, it's very likely at this point um, that it will be virtual, although there, there hasn't been a final decision. Mm -hmm. um, I think that if it were to be virtual, I mean, it, it's, I think it goes both ways, right? Like, it's cool to be able to travel to DC and to go into person in Capitol Hill into the offices and sit down with these people physically. However, um, the travel sometimes can be a barrier for people depending on their schedules or whatever. So um, doing it virtually also might make it easier for folks to participate as well. Great, any last, uh, any other questions before we wrap up? Well, this has been super helpful. Brian, could you put your email in the uh, in the chat box in case people want to reach out to you directly? And um, otherwise, uh, we really appreciate all of your interest here and uh, hope that you follow up uh, in the process and uh, keep in touch with all these different uh, organizations. We'll be sending out more info about other internship opportunities as well. So thanks to everyone um, and uh, feel, feel free to uh, share this with friends once we get posted. Take care. Thank you. And feel, Thank you, feel free to email me uh, anytime.